In our attempt to battle the mythology surrounding the story of USS Indianapolis, some of these uh, myths are more delicate and sensitive than others. And there, unfortunately, there's developed several myths surrounding Captain Charles McVeigh's suicide. And while I hesitate to correct the record on a matter as sensitive as the way a man ended his life, there have been implications that there were certain symbols or there was some hidden meaning or signals being sent in the manner in which McVeigh committed suicide. And if these are true, that's fine. They should be reflected as such. But if people are implicating signals, motive, intent into McVeigh's suicide that isn't actually there, I think we owe it to the man to make sure we don't exaggerate or improperly represent his manner of death. Now, in a separate video, I dealt with the false story that's emerged that when he killed himself, he was holding a toy sailor in his left hand. And I indicated that I have the police report, I have the crime scene photographs, the uh, including photographs of him laying on the on the steps in the front in front of his house after he committed suicide, and in neither the police report nor the crime scene photographs nor the statements of his wife or housekeeper, there's any indication that there was a toy or any item or device of any kind that he was holding when he killed himself. The only thing peripheral to his person was the pistol itself. And again, I, the implication has been that he is trying to send a signal by holding an icon, a touchstone of his Navy past. And if he had been doing that, that's fine, but there's no evidence that he has. In fact, I, I spoke to each of his sons when they were still alive about this, and neither of them could tell me where that rumor originated. There's a similar story about the weapon that Captain McVeigh used to kill himself. It's frequently reported, in fact, in, in several of the books, it's reported as being his Navy-issued revolver. Again, I don't know why people think it would be important to report the suicide weapon in such a manner, his Navy-issued revolver. Somehow, I think people believe that there's some symbology or reflected nature of his active duty past in that act, if he committed suicide using a Navy-issued revolver. What I can tell you is it's untrue. So anybody who's been in the military knows that the military doesn't issue you a weapon that you then take with you when you retire. <laughs> I, I was issued no weapon at... Nobody has. In fact, it's a big deal if a weapon goes unaccounted for in an active duty unit. Weapons are unit property. They belong to the company, battalion, ship, and they're issued by that unit when you need the weapon, and they're taken back. You turn it back in when you check out of that unit. That's the truth. That's the way the military operates. So Captain McVeigh did not have a Navy-issued weapon. So why did this story originate? You wonder what causes people to say something like this. What was their motive? Is it that they invented it maliciously out of whole cloth? I prefer not to think that they're, think anything negative about somebody like that. So why would they have said this? Well, let's go back to the police report. And I have it in front of me. In the police report, it says that the revolver was a Colt, direct action, 38 caliber, serial number 1206. It also says that McVeigh had a 
a weapon locker in his bedroom closet that contained several rifles and pistols. And he had selected this one pistol, um, taken it out. It was in a beige case, unzippered the case. There was a just a few cartridges in the case. He took two of those cartridges. He loaded them into the pistol around 1230 in the afternoon, went to his front steps and used the pistol to commit suicide. Now, when I tried to investigate further as to the provenance of that pistol, the photograph clearly shows, the photograph of McVeigh on his front steps clearly shows that pistol to be a Colt. And here's the, here's the key. Officers model target pistol with a six inch barrel, a 38 caliber, and you could tell by the grip design that this was a pistol that was manufactured in the year 1906. There were tens of thousands of these pistols made. They were widely available in the, on the aftermarket um, in the 1940s, 50s, and 60s. In fact, it stopped being made in the 1960s. But the grip design clearly shows that this was a model that was manufactured in 1906 and had been around for quite some time. It was a target pistol. It had never been issued to the United States Navy. However, the name on the the model of the pistol, Colt Officer's Model Target 38 Special, can lead someone to believe that it was um, a pistol that was issued to officers because it's in the name of the model. It was not. Okay, so again, one of those things that it, it's it's so trivial, you wonder why people keep repeating it, not just repeating on it, but harping on it, saying it over and over and over again. He was holding a toy sailor, false, and killed himself with a Navy pistol, false. If there's some symbology behind all of this, it's clearly, it's not evident in the actual facts and data that, that we still have available to us in the year 2022. So again, I'm William Toady, retired Navy captain, former commanding officer of the USS Indianapolis Submarine, current chairman of the USS Indianapolis Legacy Organization. Please join me in battling the mythology.